he'd been investigated before and his daughter had had to change schools at one point because he had molested two girls <gasps> at the school. The book is out. That means you're, you're on the promo trail for it. Yes. That means this story is coming up a lot and you are reliving it a lot. How difficult is that? It's, um, I think it's good because I finally got to tell my story because even before, you know, it was very controlled interviews and um, in court you don't really get to tell your story. It's very hammered. And so this time I actually got to, like, it's like word vomit. It just all came out and I got to release it. I was a little nervous coming out, but at the same time I was very excited because it's it's like this chapter's now done mm-hmm. and I told my story and I can move on. You look at the adorable picture of you, <laughs> oh, you on the cover. Oh, you look so beautiful. And it makes this story all the more sad to think that's that's the little girl. You forget. We sort of think of you as you were older, maybe towards the end of the run right. or how you are now. I was very cute. <laughs> oh, you are oh, You still are very cute, Look if I may. Look at those piggy <laughs> tails with ribbons. Oh, you're so cute. But you're it so ma- smushy. It, it does make it all the more impacting to think about what was going on and, and what age it was happening to you. I never really talk about it, but I never have the long hair anymore. Like every time it starts to grow out, like I always have a pixie because it starts to grow out. My husband's like, grow your hair. And I start to go out and I look like her and I don't want to look like her. Mm. So I always cut it off. You have come into Hey Dad. It's your your first acting gig out of modelling as a child. You're coming in as a new person to this story. Robert Hughes is obviously living his life the way he has already been. It's not like this was a new thing for him. No. It didn't happen straight away, but obviously there was a process there that There was grooming that happened. from yes. the very beginning because there was always like even in the the pilot, you know, you see he like when we did all the photos, he would pull me onto his lap. Mm. And you can see the hands in all the old pictures. Like if you go back through all of the old still shots, you're like, eh, it's kind of creepy now. Oh, yeah. And, he looks creepy. And then, of course, as soon as Dad died, there was that in because he knew your, your my real dad real died. Dad, yes, um, that was the first year of doing the show. Yeah, we filmed the first series, and he died between the first and the second series, and he'd never actually got to see it go to air. And then, as soon as that happened, of course, you know, there's that vacant, and so a predator at that point knows that they can swoop in. So, do you think people already knew what he was like and what he was doing prior to you even yeah. coming in and starting the show? I don't know if people in television did. Um, but there had been other things outside. Like he'd been investigated before and his daughter had had to change schools at one point because he had molested two girls <gasps> at the school. And so they actually, she had to change schools. And th- But that happened while I was on the show because she came to the studio one day to when we did rehearsals and handed him the letter that said that she'd been asked to leave. Um, wow. So at that point we all knew it wasn't just me. You were left unprotected for a lot of the time you were there. Right. And the first time Robert has uh, exposed himself to you, uh, you have gone to look for help and and couldn't really find it. No one really wanted to accept what had happened. No one wanted to believe you. And is that part of the problem, that it's always on the victim? People believed me. Oh, they did? They believed me, but they, like, Simone went to the producer and said this happened, and he said, that's great. I'll take care of it. Don't ever speak about it again. Wow. So do you think that it was like a out of sight, out of mind type situation or they were just trying to protect their we lead character? We were the highest rating television show in the country. Like we were higher than sports events. We were like rating 36 at the time. Nobody wanted to rock the boat. And a lot of the crew went, you know, to production and said, look, you know, this guy's a pedo. It's inappropriate. We can't leave her with him. And they were all just, you know, if you say anything, we're going to have you removed. Isn't that just so disgusting? And you speak about in the book how you would find your own ways to, you know, (laughs) uh, get your revenge on Robert Hughes. Yes. And give us a couple of examples of that Well, we had to use his dressing room because it was the one attached to the studio. And um, he used to keep all of his um, cosmetic stuff in there. And so um, I peed in his... (laughs) remover (laughs) so he wiped my pee all over his face um and then you know just little things like the car where you know I talk about in the book where I put mulberries all over his brand new white car and nobody and this is the thing nobody said anything they came to me and said Sarah did you do it mulberry like purple stained hands no yeah right. (laughs) like very like Simpson wasn't me and um nobody questioned it which means you know that they know because they don't want to push it. Because if they have to push it, then it comes out why you did it and they don't want to know. So how was that that um, butting of heads? You've got Robert going, they're not going to do anything. They, they haven't now. Which empowered him more. And then you fighting back with, I dare you 
to chastise me and have this all come out in the open. Yeah, so where did that reach its apex? So I guess about the time I was 12 and I actually got boobs and stuff, he was like not as interested in me anymore. And there was an incident on set where I had done, it's in the book where I said, um, you know, I feel really fat. And he's like, well, you know why that is, don't you? And I was just like, oh my God, that's so rude. But it was the first time he did it in front of everyone and everybody heard it. And so there was um, Megan, the the makeup lady, and Lauren, who was in wardrobe, literally grabbed me and took me behind the set. And really loudly, they were like, he's going to make her anorexic. And they were like, you know, he's an ass and all this sort of stuff. And that was the moment that I was empowered because I knew other people had seen it. And they were like, we are not going to put up with this anymore. And so Megan actually ended up being my unofficial chaperone. And then I was always, they were like, you know, anytime you're, you're either in the makeup room or in wardrobe and we'll take care of you and we won't allow him anywhere near you. 